The sun's energy is produced by the fusion of hydrogen nuclear I. Explain fusion reactions with reference to binding energy. So the first mark you need to answer what is fusion. So fusion is to,、uh, the process of two lighter nuclear I combine with each other to form a heavier nuclear I. So two lighter nuclear I combine to form a heavier nuclear I. Right.、Um, And then you need to talk about fusion reactions in terms of binding energy. So for fusion reaction, product have a higher binding energy. And you can see this from the binding energy curve. So I'm just gonna sketch the curve here. So this is arrow forty six, if I remember correctly. This is the most energetically stable、uh, atom here, and here they become more stable by fusion, and here atoms becomes more stable by fission. And here is binding energy, and here is nuclear on number. So as a heavier Uh, as the heavy nuclear is formed, we can see that binding energy increases, and for fission, binding energy decreases. Right. Uranium two thirty A produces plutonium two thirty nine, which is used as a fuel in breeder reactors. Outline why the term breeder is used for the reactors. So when you see the term breeder, you can think about something that produces something. Right. And the term is used for the reactors because reactors produce more fissile materials than it than they consume, and fissile materials refer to materials that can sustain a chain reaction. So because reactors produce more fissile material. Then they consume. And if you are familiar with chemical equation, not chemical re equation, sorry, uh, those reactions, rea reaction equa equations, you probably know that breeder reactors they convert the non-fissile material, non-fissile. Non-fissile material of uranium two hundred thirty-eight, and it has a proton number of twenty ninety-two, to the fissile material. Fissile material of plutonium two hundred thirty-nine with a proton number of ninety-four. Right. Did you use the fission reaction when plutonium is bonded with a neutron to produce those two products? So here is the equation. Oops, I forgot to write the neutron. So how do we do this problem? So we know that for、um, those reactions, there are a few things that are always conserved. The first one is momentum, and the second one, which is gonna be used in this problem, is those number. Those number here. So mass number is conserved. And here the number is equal to two thirty nine plus one. Which is equal to two hundred forty. So this is the the initial mass number of all reactants. 
and here for product they are supposed to have the same number so 133 plus 133 is equal to 236 so they need to add a actual number of 4 so here I'm just gonna add 4 um, neutron here because neutron they have a mass number of 1 and a proton not proton yeah a proton number of 0 well right so the number here will be conserved so this is the equation here nuclear disaster released radioactive uh, calcium into the atmosphere which presents serious health risks CS137 has a half-life of 30 years calculate the percentage of CS137 remaining in the atmosphere after 240 years so 240, uh, sorry, 240 years divided by 30 is equal to 8. This tells us that this particle here, this substance here, is going to go through 8 half-life. And for half-life, we know that after going through one half-life, it only has uh, 50%. And after going through another half-life, it's going to be divided by 2. So 50 divided by 2 is equal to 25% uh, percent, and then 12.5, right? You just divide them by 2. So after going through a half-life, how many, how, 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 calculate the percentage of this particle. So it just equal to a half with a power uh, of 8. And because we want to calculate percentage, I'm going to multiply by 100 percent and this will give us the answer of 0 0.39 percent so this is how much percentage remains after 240 40 years